What's up, you guys? Brandon here, creator of FizboDomination.com. And for the first time ever, I'm going to give you a small sneak peek behind the curtain into one of our trainings inside our For Sale by Owner listing training program. And never before have I done this, but I wanted to just give you a behind the scenes look of what it's like. What, what's one of our trainings like that are helping our students get massive transformation? And so if you're the type of agent who wants instant gratification or um, yeah, you know, looking for the next quick fix, this, this video definitely is not for you. So do not watch this. Just click the next video on YouTube because this training is very long, it's very in-depth, and it's very intense. So if you're the type of person who wants real transformation in your life, then this would be an awesome video for you to watch if you're a real estate agent looking to grow your listing business. Now, after you watch this video, if you want more information about what we do and how we're helping agents literally transform their business, transform their life, and taking them from where they're at now to becoming a top listing agent, click the link below this video and you can learn more about our training program. So hopefully you enjoy this. I've never ever done this before. So um, hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Put a comment below this video. Ask me whatever question you have about your real estate business and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hey guys, welcome to this training called Face Off with the Man in the Mirror. And this is our first mindset training. And I'm very, very excited to share with you the information in this training because I never, I've never shared it before with anybody. And, you know, it's very, very deep uh, content that we're going to go through. And so as you watch this, my recommendation is that you are, um, that you're focused, that maybe this is the training where you sit down and you're away from everything and everyone, and you really, really go deep on your thoughts. So with that, let's jump into it. So here's what we'll cover in this training. And here's a little disclaimer before we start this training. Uh, this training is extremely deep and it's designed to transform you. And like I said before, I've never released this information until now. So as you go through this, please go through this training without judgment and have a clear and open mind. And so here's what we're gonna cover in today's training. We're gonna talk about the steps to diagnosing your current self, like where you're at today in your current life and understanding the birth of the victim. And so as I walk you through that, I'm going to talk to you about something called your confirmation bias and how your current thoughts and your current belief system was actually created. Then we'll talk about something called feedback loops and how you go through life and judge different experiences and how you grow from those. And then I'm going to end this training, our first mindset training, on the gap between who you are now and who you must become to achieve your goals and your dreams. So let's jump right into it. So in order to start off this training correctly, we have to start off with this question. And that question is this, what is going to be your biggest challenge in growing your real estate business? So think about that for just a second. What is gonna be your biggest challenge in growing your real estate business? Now, a lot of people answer that a lot of different ways. But I don't believe it's going to be other agents in your market. It won't be the company or brokerage you choose to work with or their commission split. It won't be you know the leads or the lack of leads you're getting or the current market situation. It won't be any of these things. It'll be you. You will be your biggest obstacle, your biggest challenge, and it's your current self, where you're at today. And I'm going to explain to you why this is right now. The hard truth is this. Right now, as you watch this training, 
your current life is in the current situation because of your current self. Your current, the amount of money you make, the kind of car you drive, the relationships you have, whether you're in shape or you're overweight, the amount of money you have in savings, everything is where it is based on who you are today. Now, there's no, it's not right or wrong, good or bad. It just is. And think about that for a second. Your current mindset, belief system, skills, actions, behaviors, everything led you up to this day right now where you're watching this training. And everything you possess, that you have, that you believe in is based on who you are right now. Right or wrong, good or bad, happy or sad. You know, maybe you're upset with where you're at in life. Wherever you may be, it's based off of the hard truth that it's you. It's based on who you are right now. And so the first step or the first thing that has to happen before any transformation can take place is that we have to take 100% responsibility for our current situation. And this is the first step and it's really, really difficult because this is the birth of the victim. You see, the victim cannot take responsibility for their actions. They can't take responsibility for their current situation. It's just too painful for them. The victim believes that by placing blame on others and past experiences for their current situation, that somehow this will justify their current situation. It'll justify their pain that they feel. It'll justify where they're at in their life. And the victim always has a story of why they can't achieve their goals and dreams, and it's never their fault. So, once you've taken full responsibility for your current life and where you're at today, the next step is to understand your current self and your bias towards current worldviews. Okay, so let's jump into step number two, which is facing your dark side. And what I mean by your dark side is the voice in the back of your mind, this voice that you struggle with on a daily basis. And I'm going to explain to you what the dark side means right now. So facing your dark side, do you ever wonder why? One side of you is super excited and optimistic, and then at the very same time, you have another side that seems to pull you down and say things like, you know what, let's not even try that. That's too difficult. I don't want to go through all of that. It's like we have these two voices in our head at constant battle with one another. That's your dark side. Here's an example of your good side and your dark side at battle and maybe you can relate to this and so your good side at one point said hey I want to get into real estate I want to start selling real estate and your dark side says why you know it's really really hard and you know most people fail and your good side says well I need to prospect every single day And your dark side says and is filled with fear and procrastination your good side says well, I'm worthy of success. And then the other side of you, this dark side says, no, you're scared and filled with doubt. Let's be real. And it's a constant back and forth. You know, your good side says, I need to go all in. I need to commit to this thing 100%. And then the other side of you says, no, keep things, you know, keep things on the side just in case this thing doesn't work out. In case you fail in real estate, let's keep this other opportunity over here going at the same time because you never know, right? And it's just this constant tug of war. Here's a couple more examples. Your good side says, I need to stay focused on one thing. And this is your dark side. And this is what most agents struggle with. No, look at this thing over here. This thing looks a lot easier to do, a lot uh, uh, a lot easier, a lot less painful. Try this other thing. And that has agents chasing every shiny object. Your good side 
tells you, listen, we need to wake up early tomorrow and work out. And then you get to the next morning and your dark side says, no, sleeping in today just doesn't matter. Sleeping in feels a lot better. And then last example, start making a healthy lunch. You know, we're spending a ton of money on going out to eat. We're eating like shit. Let's start making a healthy lunch. And your dark side says, ah, you know, I'd like to get out of the office. Let's get out of the office and grab lunch. It's way easier. And it's this constant back and forth. This is an example of what we go through on a daily basis. So it's under, it's important to understand how your dark side is actually created. And it's created from past life experiences, past exposures, the way that you were raised, your current environment, and your support system. So this is how it was for me. And for me, my dark side was very, very deep. And it took me years to conquer my dark side because I grew up with nothing. And I was surrounded by wealth, which caused a ton of conflict for me. And so when you grow up with with nothing in a very, very rich area, it causes it caused me a lot of pain. I grew up with a single mother because my dad was not in the picture. He was an alcoholic and left. We could barely buy groceries and clothes. And when we did, we had to buy them from the sale rack. And I was constantly told to turn off the lights. Don't take too long in the shower. We need to save energy. I was brought up to believe that you go to college, good, get good grades, and go find a good job. This didn't make any sense to me. All the people I saw growing up that had, that had the life that I wanted were all entrepreneurs. And so this caused me to have a very deep dark side for many, many years. And so let's talk about the dark force holding your heels. Do you ever notice the constant emotional roller coaster? One day you feel great and motivated to take massive action towards your goals and then other days you seem to find every excuse in the book why you can't seem to take any action and you can justify it. You know, you could tell yourself all the stories in the world as to why I'm not going to why I'm not going to prospect, why I'm not going to do this, why I'm not going to do that. And you're and it makes sense to you. Then there are days when you convince yourself that you'd be better off just quitting. This is the dark force that holds your heels. And your dark side shows up everywhere because people don't just have business problems. They have personal mindset and behavioral problems that show up in your business. And that's your dark side. So I'm going to say that one more time. People don't have business problems. They have personal problems that show up in their business. And that's what I see over and over and over again. And this is really fascinating, uh, fascinating because we have all these problems in their business. We don't have enough listings. We don't have enough cash flow. We don't have enough leads. I don't have the right website. I'm not at the right company, so on and so forth. And the interesting part is that we look inside our business for the answer, right? We're constantly on the search for the shiny thing that will fix all of our business problems. And in my experience, it's not the business that has the issues. It's the personal issues showing up in your business. Think about that. Let that sit in for a second. It's In my experience, it's not that you don't have enough listings, that you don't have enough cash flow, you don't have enough leads, you don't have the right website, you don't have the right CRM, you're not at the right company, it's not in the right market, you're not in the right area. It's not any of those things. It's it's our own self that's getting in the way that's just appearing in our business for the first time. And for many people, being in real estate is the first time they've been an entrepreneur. So if someone is not committed in their business, they are usually not committed in other areas of their life, right? They're not committed to their spouse. They're not committed to eating healthy. They're not committed to exercising or, or keeping their house and car clean. And so they have no commitment in their business, right? That's a really good example of personal problems showing up in your business. Having an unhealthy mind or body, you probably have an unhealthy business. Are you bad with money? 
then your business will have money issues and tax problems. People try to fix business problems with pure business, business tactics. And that's the one thing they believe will work. But I'm telling you, no amount of tactics and strategies will fix a personal issue showing up in your business. You must fix the personal issue and then it will disappear in your business. And if you're having business problems, search your dark side first. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. The pattern in your life will show up in everything you do. If you're late to one thing, you're late to everything. If you show no commitment to your mindset or health or going to bed on time, you'll have low commitment in your business. If you can't focus on simply watching a movie with your family or reading a book, or this is my favorite one, listening to a song in its entirety, do you constantly just change this, uh, change the song after it's going for one or two minutes? You can't even stand to listen to a three minute song then you won't be able to focus on your business. You won't be able to focus on prospecting and you won't be able to grow a consistent business. How you do one thing is how you do everything. If your house or car is always a mess, then your business is probably a mess. How you do one thing is how you do everything. And don't feel bad about all of this. We just want to bring awareness. This training is about learning about your current self. So what do you want to do? Is commit to excellence in every area of your life, right? So you want to focus on having a healthy mind and body. A healthy uh, mind and body equals a healthy body and business. Have your work area, your house, your car clean and immaculate at all times. And my recommendation is that you hire a cleaning person if possible, right? Delegate the lowest dollar per hour activities. And this is one of the first hires I recommend an agent make in their business. Hire a cleaner to come in and take care of keeping your house and your office and your car clean. Take care of your hygiene, shave every day and dress immaculately every single day. Even if you work from home by yourself. Clean your desktop and your phone of clutter. You know, I see this all the time. And I, I'm guilty myself of having your desktop filled with shit and your phone with all the apps possible. You don't need any of that. Clean it all up. Clean up your email and your text inbox. Having thousands and thousands of emails in your inbox. It's gonna wreak havoc on your mind and your energy. And then schedule time to focus on your family, right? Don't be the person that's always checking your phone every two seconds. You gotta check this email, I gotta respond to that text message. Spend time each month working on your finances. Have it scheduled right in your calendar. And if you take this seriously, your life and your business will explode. Next. We live to our lowest standards, not our highest standards. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. Standards are things that we do every time without fail, ever. So that's the definition of a standard. And the best way to describe this is with our hygiene. You see, most of us brush our teeth every day. We clean up after using the bathroom, hopefully. Right? That's a, that's a standard. Those things happen in our life every single time without fail. But here's the crazy thing. We don't live this way in other areas of our life. We're perfectly fine leaving food wrappers in our car. We're perfectly fine not prospecting a day here or a day there. We're fine taking an unplanned day off because we just don't feel like working today. We're perfectly fine not working out and eating like shit because hell, it doesn't matter to eat bad here or there. That doesn't matter. And this is how we live our life until one day we wake up and say, what happened? And this brings us to the conflict of complacency. And it was said that complacency is the death of high achievement. 
And that is exactly what I believe in. And this is how most people behave. When we're at our lowest point, no money in the bank, no savings, nothing going on, no listings, then we say, time to get to work and time to work our ass off. Then, when we have a ton going on, 10 listings, 8 pendings, 12 closings this month, and money in the bank, we say, ah, now I can take it easy. This is your dark side. It's disruptive behavior in your life. Which brings us to step three. How your mind works and belief system was created. So let's have some fun and do a little exercise. There's something called your confirmation bias. And what your confirmation bias is, is how you look at current worldviews and current situations and your bias towards these things, which has created your own belief system. And I'm gonna show you how this works right now. So in this part of the training, I want you to really, really pay attention. And here's what I want you to do. As I show you these different pictures, I want you to feel the emotion and thoughts as they naturally happen. Don't overthink it. Just relax and pay attention to your natural mental response. Are you ready? Let's go. Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump. A family living in a trailer park and they all own guns. A billionaire lighting a cigar with a hundred dollar bill. A loving, happy family. A red Ferrari. Juicy cheeseburgers. A healthy salad. An alcoholic, abusive father. Now, what did you feel? What was the natural feeling you had as I walked you through those different images? Whatever you felt, whatever you, th whatever you thought, that was your confirmation bias. Our confirmation bias is how our minds work and how we think. And it's built from a comparison, past emotion and past experiences. And naturally, when you see things, when you experience things, and your natural feelings is what we call a confirmation bias. And so here's an example, right? There can't be light without darkness. Think about that for just, sec for just a second. How could there be light if there was no dark? If you couldn't compare and it was always dark outside, would, there, would you know what light is? Well, no, because you'd have no comparison. It was just, it was just, it, it just was. Well, you wouldn't call it dark because in order to call something dark, there has to be a comparison, which is light. And if it was always dark, there would be no comparison. Here's another example. You probably, when it comes to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, you probably have very strong feelings one way or another. And either way, when you see or hear something that confirms your belief, you seem to prove that belief to yourself over and over and say things like, see, I told you. And that's your confirmation bias. You can always prove your current belief system right or wrong, no matter what somebody says. And if there is something that goes against that belief, it's like it didn't even exist. This is confirmation bias. Here's the crazy thing to think about. When we look at this example of Hillary and Trump, is it possible that there could be an undeniable proof about each one of these people that goes against your belief that is 100% true? Is it possible? 
The answer to that question, regardless of your current confirmation bias, the answer to that is yes. That's the reality. And what I'm not saying is, I don't need to, I'm not trying to change your opinion of how you feel. However, we do need to accept that it's possible that there is concrete, undisputable facts that prove our beliefs wrong. And we just, our confirmation bias does not allow us to see these truths. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to prove it to you. Story number one. I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you. I jumped in the passenger side of my buddy's car and off we went. And it wasn't long thereafter when it happened. My friend Ed was driving way too fast. He ran off the road and he crashed into a mound of sand, sending that car hurling into the air before it tumbled back to earth and over end. And it was in that one defining moment that everything about my life would change. One of the first times that I came to, a few weeks later, Dr. Stringer walked into my room and he goes, Scott, I, I understand you've been complaining. You can't, you can't move anything, your arms, your legs. And he goes, and unfortunately, you've broken your neck. And you have a very serious spinal cord injury. And it has left you paralyzed from your chest down. He diagnosed a quadriplegic. When I first started pushing a wheelchair, that's when one of my doctors so, pulled me over. And he goes, Scott, look. You need to understand the seriousness of your spinal cord injury and come to realize that the movement that you're getting back in your arms is as good as it's going to get. What I heard was, you might as well go ahead right now and give up hope. Give up hope on the idea you'll ever come out of this chair. But the problem was, I bought into his words. Whether you're a parent, whether you're part of this family or a 19 year old quadriplegic, that no matter how difficult life is for you, in that moment, you can always change your way of thinking. And that's when I made the profound decision that I was willing to fail, but I was unwilling to quit. It's a mindset that can define you as an individual, as a team, as an industry leader. Don't ever let your competition or someone else's beliefs paralyze you from achieving those things you believe in your mind that you just might be able to achieve. So think about that for just a second. A great story of confirmation bias. A man that was injured in an automobile accident and diagnosed as a quadriplegic and every doctor in the world telling this guy that he would never move. He would never walk again. And you just witnessed him walk across the stage. This is what I'm talking about. This is an example of being able to look past your own confirmation bias and to understand that it's possible to have a new truth, to have a new life, regardless of your current self, of who you are watching this video right now. Here's a true story number two. So this boy grew up in extreme poverty. He had to drop out of school at the age of 15 to take a job as a janitor to support his family. At a young age, he had aspirations to be a comedian, but was continuously booed off stage over and over again. 
until he couldn't find another job. He was rejected over and over and over again during auditions of Saturday Night Live. And of course, we're talking about Jim Carrey, one of the most highest paid actors of all time with a net worth of over $150 million. Again, another story of looking past our own confirmation bias. Here's another true story. This woman grew up without a washer and dryer and her grandmother had to boil her clothes to keep them clean. She wasn't allowed to sleep uh, inside the home and was forced to sleep outside. Her childhood was filled with abuse and poverty. She was beat so bad that the welts on her back would bleed later through her clothes. Then she was beat more because she got blood on her clothes. And her clothes were made from potato sacks. From the ages 9 through 13, she was raped by her cousins, uncle, and their friends. She got pregnant at 14, but the baby was born premature and died. And of course, we're talking about Oprah. Another good example. Net worth of over $2.9 billion. So I ask, what is your confirmation bias? What is your truth? And what is the story you tell yourself about what you can and cannot achieve based on your current self, your current standards, your current situation, your current belief system? And what do most of us say? Oh, I can never list for sale by owners. I can never list over a hundred homes. I can never make a multi six or seven figure business selling real estate. This person's never gonna meet me. I can never prospect and set appointments. That's just not me. This seller is never going to list their home with me. This strategy will never work with me. This won't work in my market. I don't have that many FISBOs in my market. This just won't work for me. And then here's how our confirmation bias works against us. We make calls for three days and don't set an appointment and then say, see, I told you this won't work. I told you this won't work. We meet with two for sale by owners and then they don't list and then they list with other agents and then we say, I told you. See, I met with those people and they listed with somebody else. I told you it wouldn't work for me. You're confirming your past experiences. And here's what we do. It's called the life scale. And here's an example of the life scale. Let's look at prospecting for just a second. Most people who don't have the right training mindset and belief system have a negative bias towards prospecting based on past experiences. And so as we stack up those negative past experiences, we place massive boulders on our confirmation bias in this category of negative experiences. And our confirmation bias puts us in a position to, to to explain, to justify, to prove to the world that our own thoughts and our own experiences and our own mindset are right. That is called confirmation bias. You cannot allow this belief to be proven wrong. You'll defend it to the, to the death. You see, listen, Brandon, I have prospected, I've made over a hundred phone calls and I have not set one appointment. This doesn't work. That is your negative confirmation bias. So you must be aware of your confirmation bias as it relates to your dark side and how it works. And this is why it, it said that whatever you believe in will become your reality, right or wrong. Whatever your current belief is, right or wrong, will become your reality. So society's worldviews and right versus wrong. Most of our current beliefs come from society's current world views. And I'm gonna give you some examples of some more photos. So here's a young couple on a yacht in the middle of the ocean having a great vacation. And people think that's wrong. Here's a picture of a woman in nature doing yoga. 
world, the society today says this is right. Here's a picture of a young man starting a business at a, at a young age and society says, no, this is wrong. Going to college and getting an education, society has said that this is right. Society says, you know, city life, oh, I don't want to do city life, that's wrong. Here's a picture of a young family in the country. They think this is right. Here's a picture of a young couple living a very extravagant life, coming out of a sports car, going into their private jet. Society has told us that this is evil, this is wrong, this is bad. Here's a family living a modest life. This is right. This is, this is correct. Here's a picture of a spiritual being, which society has told us that's wrong. You don't, you don't talk about that stuff. Scientists, that's right, that's correct. Science is where all the truth, all the facts are. Here's a picture of a gay couple. Society has told us this is wrong. Here's a straight couple. This is correct, this is right. So this is how our own belief system is created. You see, human beings are very easy to program. We're very easy to program to think a certain way and to decide on what is right versus wrong. We grow up thinking, who am I? And our experiences form the answers and cause all the conflict. And this constant thought process on who am I? And he who is not with me is against me. He that is not like me is my enemy. That's the worldview, right? So if people are different or people have a different bias towards life, then society says they are against me. And the new paradigm is to be non-binary or have any bias against yourself or other views. So here's step number four. Step number four is called feedback loops. And feedback loops are a way for us to understand our current behavior and thought patterns and, be, and, and belief systems and how we can uh, get future change and the results that we want. And so here's how they work. It all starts with taking an action, some type of action. That action can be positive or negative. And we have, and we experience that action, right? So we take an action, we have an experience, which gets us some type of result. Those results offer learnings. Those learnings put us in a position to iterate or change. And then we take another action. And that is how feedback loops work. This is how your entire life is where it is today based on feedback loops and like i said before there are negative and positive loops depending on how you iterate and change these loops will grow on top of each other and produce a greater result or a greater failure depending on your iteration and your change here's an example so i use the example of prospecting we call for two hours that's the action we experience what that's like over two hours. The result is that we talk to 20 people, we set one appointment. Now, based on this experience and these results, we've, we learned, we learned what to say, what worked, what didn't work, how to say things, and then we iterate and change. And then we can take another action. And that action is either call for another two hours the following day or not call or not call. And you see, that's how a negative loop works. So if you, if you decide to not call the next day based on your past experiences, your past results, the past learnings, and, you, and your iteration or your changes, I'm not doing that again, that's a call a negative loop. Now you don't call for two hours and you have an experience which yields a result of no conversations and no appointments set. And then the learnings there were, oh shit, I didn't do the thing that caused me pain yesterday. I don't have any results. 
I need to iterate and change. And so it brings you to another day where you say, I'm going to call. And you see, this is a constant, you're in constant feedback loops on everything, every area of your life. You're in constant feedback loops, just circling that never stop, either positive or negative. Now, you can learn from the experience and get better or allow the negative experience to cause you to stop taking action. Either way, the loop keeps going. You're either heading towards your goals or away from them. And the feedback loops are how it happens. So diagnosing your current self. Here are some resources and exercise that I recommend that you do next. Number one is complete the current self diagnosis uh, diagnosis questionnaire that's in the download section of this training, which I'm gonna walk you through here in just a second. Number two is to complete the personality exams. Okay, so let me show you these really quick. All right, so in the download section of this training, you're gonna see this current self diagnosis, uh, diagnosis questionnaire. And here are the questions. Number one, how do you describe yourself in a few short sentences? Number two, what are some things that people say about you behind your back that are true? Isn't that an interesting question? What are some things people say about you behind your back that are true about your current self? What would someone say about you that maybe is negative, but is true? Number three, how much money do you currently earn and have saved? Number four, describe what you look like, how much you weigh, how do you dress, how do you present yourself? List all of your current good and bad behaviors or bad habits. List your top three to five strengths. List your top three to five weaknesses. What are your negative thoughts that pop up in your head constantly? What scenario are you constantly worried about happening that has not actually happened? Number 10, what about your future do you worry about most? Number 11, who are you angry at? Who do you blame? This is the victim talking. Number 12, what things distract you daily from doing what you know you should do to reach your goals? Number 13, what things do you love doing every day? Number 14, what things do you dread doing every day? And then number 15, what things do you do repeatedly that you feel bad about? Now, I want you to pause this video and I want you to complete this exercise for yourself. And if you'd like to share this with the group, you can do that. But this is for you. And if you'd like to just share this to the world because you're committed to becoming the person that you need to become to reach your goals, feel free to share these results with the group. And then number 16, 17, and 18. These are all personality uh, assessments. Number uh, 16 and 17 are free. Number 18, I think costs $40 or something. But I would really, really highly recommend that you take these exams so you can learn more about yourself. And then number 19 is document your personality results here. And then after you've gone through this exercise, number 20 is I'd like to know what your biggest learnings or trends about your current self that appeared from completing this exercise. Like, what are your big learnings about yourself here? Again, I would recommend that you uh, encourage you to share this with the group so you can have good conversations, so you can declare, hey, you guys, here's my current self. Here's what I am, uh, here's where I'm currently at in my life. And now you start to transcend. Go back in here. And so I recommend that you do this right now. Don't procrastinate. Don't allow your dark side to tell you, oh, I'll just do this later. Well, later never happens. Do it now. Okay, next we're going to talk about the solution and where we go from here. You see, we're in our current situation. We're our current self. And the solution is to get to our desired situation. And how we do this 
is by transcending our current self into our new self. And we've spent this training understanding our current self. And this is what we call your baseline. You're going to hear me say this a lot. This is your baseline or your current self. And whatever that is today, it is what it is. We can't be mad at it because it is what it is. Maybe you're distracted. You have a negative mindset, an attitude. Maybe you just bounce from one thing to another. Maybe you have a bad diet and you don't exercise or you're addicted to social media. And maybe you have a bad understanding of how to create a high income. Wherever you're at, this is your baseline. And the solution is creating your new self. A new character. Somebody that you're not today. Who is the type of person that has the life that you want? That's who you must become. Your new self is focused, fit, positive, creates a high income. And that's what's next. What next is, in our next mindset training, you're going to learn how to create your new self and creating your new character. This new person that's going to be able to get the results we're after. And in the next mindset training, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So I want to thank you for watching our first mindset training. I know it's deep. I know it has you in self-reflection. And that's the point. We need to bring awareness and understand our current self, our current being, who we are today in order to transcend into our new self. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next training.